Well, it's very true because, I mean, like you've mentioned, there's um, the, the rock tape, the kinesio tape, the kinesiology taping and, and all those sort of things. But um, your name just keeps popping up uh, mm -hmm. for, for the last two years. Uh, Marcus sure. Ehard, Marcus Ehard. And it's like, what can, what can he be doing that's so different? But uh, <laughs> obviously, uh, it's very different. And, and the, the yeah. techniques, uh, is it, can people from entry level come to the, your come workshops the, your as well? Workshop or is it more well, of an advanced, more workshop? advanced workshop? No, no, no. no. Um, my general goal is I want to not only have physiotherapists or doctors using it and understanding it, I also want to have the, uh, the strength condition coaches, athletic trainers, uh, for maybe yoga teachers, because it's it's not just the taping, it's it's the it's the knowledge behind it, and if you have restricted movement or pain um, or a, a movement that is not well controlled, you can sort it out with a few stripes of tape, and so there there's so much you can do, and yeah, the techniques are different. The whole approach, so the techniques that are really relevant, creating that unique myofascial release, you you don't see that in kinesiology taping. They, they could also speak about, yes, we do also have fascia techniques, and they, yes, they do have fascia techniques, and we also have a myofascial release, and yes, they do, but it's a different one to to what I do. Um, I. I I address many receptors and in order to address these receptors and have an effect you first have to speak the right language so it has needs to be tension or uh, pressure or pressuring ratio to time and you have to speak loud enough so that they can hear you and if I don't shift enough there, there won't be any effect like I create um, because you have to reach these thresholds of so that the receptors are yeah kicking in and otherwise you you will see a, a color tape on your body but without the effect that I can achieve so you can never differentiate a tape from a distance you have to see how you apply it do you shift the tissue at the right spot towards the right the neck direction for a uh, a distance that is long enough with enough tension on the tape and so and also you have to differentiate the different uh, uh, types of fascia or different qualities if you have thin fascia with a lot of receptors you don't have to do as much as you would uh, deal with the plantar fascia or with the fascia that is stronger has less um, uh, receptors and yeah, <laughs> so many things you have to yeah get together. <laughs> That's an interesting one actually, <clears throat> because that ties into why body reading is so important. Um, because there are active habits and passive habits that will change the structure of your fascia, and and um, yeah, sitting is a really big issue. And will become a bigger if issue if you don't, uh, yeah, change it. Uh, by the way, I am standing <laughs> for the interview. <laughs> I have a standing de desk that I can uh, move up and down. Um, because if you sit too long, and I will demonstrate, uh, you have a, an intelligent body, an intelligent system. So it always tries to work efficient. And when you sit long enough, it will shorten the front of your chest, so the sternal fascia. It will shorten um, the hamstrings, it will shorten the iliopsoas and the connective tissue, the collagen. And so it will uh, shorten, so there will be less uh, cells and therefore the problem is then when you want to stand upright, you will always um, work against that tension you have created by sitting too long. So you see then when head is forward, because the fascia tension it keep, keeps the head forward, and what happens is that the muscles at the back uh, 
the trapezius uh, levator or um, the, the, the cervicals, they have to work a lot. So they are uh, loaded, eccentrically loaded. And if you have pain, it will be at the back, but the problem will definitely be at the front. So, and when you have a posture like this, what you do is you shift your, your pelvis forward just to bring back your, your head so it's easier for me to stabilize my head. So it's not efficient here, but <laughs> I, my posture at the pelvis or low back and hamstrings is now not so good. And, and seeing these patterns, I don't have to know or ask them where they feel pain, but I know just from seeing it where I have to treat them. And so I can start with injury prevention or pain prevention. So where would you typically go, typically go for the posture that you just described? It's, uh, okay. In order... Not, being, not too much of a recipe. I yeah, yeah. don't want to drag. <laughs> but in just order... So get the, the all the muscles that are eccentrically loaded and trying to prevent your head from falling forward, <laughs> they, they probably will be the ones that are painful. So in order to um, make them shut up, <laughs> so in order to, to, to kill the pain, I would have to tape these eccentrically loaded uh, muscles um, to offload, to reduce tension, normalize tension. But in order to have a good result in the long term, I need to go to the front of the body and have to lengthen it making it more adaptable and <clears throat> so probably I would do both at the same time or at the same session if I just went to the front um, if I'm lucky they would be pain-free but usually they would still be still have pain uh, it's like in real life they need first aid these are the victims they need first aid and they need to be treated and taped and then they are free of pain but to to keep it in the long term you need to treat the front if i only tape the front in a couple of days or weeks or months they would be fine but it needs both the the criminal and the victims and then i would go uh down because that's just one part of the body um you need to see how the pelvis is in uh integrated and usually when you have a uh, the pelvis forward your calves will have a lot of tension so if i go to the calves have my fascial release with the tape you will see also um, benefits higher up in the body um, they, people can bend further forward and so that's part of my approach <laughs> it's the active hands because uh, when i see how somebody moves or what their habits are. Um, sitting was a more or less a passive habit. <laughs> and when you sit yes. too long, also your your uh, fascial sheets, they don't get this, uh, the shear movement, the shearing. And so they have time enough to get it here. <laughs> but when we go to the, um, to the, sorry, to the active habit, like, so when you see this picture, you can see what an active habit does with your fascia. Because that's the sternum, that's pec major left and right. And you see collagen fibers, these thin, white, silvery fibers going this direction. But you don't see it on this part going across. Uh, there are fibers, the same uh, yeah same direction but you can't see them because they're not as thick because if it was a tennis player for example it probably would be uh, left-handed so if this is the left hand left left arm and shoulder uh, when they do the serve they will maybe you need me now <laughs> they will go into this direction and bringing tension and pressure into this system and creating wherever the tension is high it will always go along with the piezoelectrical, piezoelectrical effect so there will be uh, electrical um, 
yeah g going going this way that's a trigger to embed cells in that very f direction that's creating the fiber direction to be stronger to have more catapult effect to load your fascia to get more uh, out of it because when you want to understand fascia and movement you should understand the, the collagen properties collagen you can uh, stretch that much it's three to five percent but when you stretch it and let go it comes straight back so um, so and that's what we do when we load our fascia in different kinds of movements and <clears throat> that's free energy so